Ladies and gentlemen, we are at Sacramento Historic Cemetery. Some people call it Old City Cemetery. It's known for its mausoleums, lush gardens, beautiful statues, many fine grave markers like this one you see in front of me, Agnes, wife of W.N. Sid Greaves. Beautifully engraved. Lots of statues, lots of engravings in various types of plots all the way from the Masons to the early pioneers, miners, different fraternal organizations such as the Order of Odd Fellows. We'll get into it a little bit later. This cemetery was established in 1849 after gold was discovered in Coloma. Many flocked to form Sacramento and the valley has 11 million people so you did need a large cemetery to sustain the residents. A lot of history, a lot of culture. Many of the individuals that are buried here are prominent. Governors of California, Civil War veterans, firefighters, victims of the 1850 cholera epidemic. This is the oldest cemetery in the Sacramento area. Like I said, 1849, 1850 is when it was established. Cemetery is meant to resemble a Victorian type of garden, or at least it's Victorian themed. A lot of the graves date back to that era, if not older. A lot of flower species. I've seen over so far 15 different flowers just standing at the front gates. Truly a wonder. It's one of the top historic sites, I believe, in Sacramento. It was developed when Sacramento became a boom, a booming city. It dates back to Sacramento's early days, a time when miners came to the valley and the city began to grow. Many of the graves are very old. Cemetery is rumored to be haunted. And we'll get into the ghost stories a little bit later. I just wanted to show you some brief film and I'll piece it all together and give you guys a nice video, a well deserved video, and a documentary of this location. Love the rose gardens that are here. You could spend all day. Oh man, it smells so beautiful here. Due to all the flowers, it just smells like being in a garden. 1859, Naylor Vickers, this is a bell, it says exempt fireman's plot and historic fire bell, restored by George A. King, retired engineer in 1988, this is nice, Yet, even though this is one massive cemetery, this is a cemetery within a cemetery, this is probably the fireman's cemetery right here, oh yes it is, let's see what it says. The Fireman's Plot. The inscription engraved on a silver trumpet presented to the engine company in 1853, a token of appreciation. It was actually Fire Engine Company number three. Perhaps best describes Sacramento's gallant volunteer fire department as a whole. Almost every other city whose beginnings were of tents and wooden structures, fire was a constant threat to early Sacramento destroyed. And it destroyed in part of the entire, entirely by numerous conflagrations, cities and towns of lesser fortitude and determination would have vanished. But Sacramento was determined to survive and a call went out to form a volunteer fire company to fight back. The call was answered and the Sacramento claimed the honor of having organized the first fire company in the state of California. When Mutual Hook and Ladder Number 1 went online in February of 1850, it was soon followed by the Confidence Engine Company Number 1 and 1950 Protection Engine Company 2. You guys get the idea. Each of the fire companies was made up of 60 to 65 men, and by 1860, there were five pumpers and two or three ladder companies manned over 400 volunteers. The volunteers raised money for housing, furniture, equipment, uniforms, and their cemetery fund. And so this is the Fireman's Cemetery right here. Beautiful, beautiful place. The Hook and Ladder Company was formed. 
in the mid 1800s. These firemen gave their lives to protect Sacramento. Beautiful cemetery. Beautiful. Every plot is different here. There's different plots, different sections. Basically what you're looking at is a cemetery within multiple cemeteries. Strangely, the EMF readings are quite high here. I've gotten readings mid-grade, three to four. I'm not saying that's super high. There's also power lines along the edge of the cemetery, so I think it's possible that that's what we're getting as power line readings. I still have to mention it being a paranormal investigator and see what everybody thinks. But I try to keep an open mind. And there's no way we're going to be able to see this place to its entirety. But I'll try to cover as much as I can. It, they close in an hour. There's palm trees growing here. I mean, this is a beautiful place. It's one of the, my favorite parts of Sacramento so far. A lot of creepy statues. This tree, 150 feet in height. The base would take about six people to hold the interlock hands. There's squirrels, there's flowers. This place is truly historic in every way. You'd have to be a fool to come to Sacramento and not visit this place. It even has its own visitor center. I want to show you something. It's almost in the red. Unusually high EMF activity. Pauline Hess, 1861, 1911. 1911, Andrew Ross, native of Germany, 1930 to 1901. Wow. Wow. It's a really beautiful place. definitely a place I'd like to look into more. I'm not going to be able to do it as much. I don't have much time, so we'll have to come back. Massive stone slabs. 1862. 1857. Contains some of Sacramento's oldest graves. The region's oldest graves. Wow. It's a beautiful cemetery. The more I explore it, the more flowers I keep coming across. It's like, wow. Man, did you see this flower? It's huge. It's bigger than my head. Wow. The flower's larger than my head. I've seen over 30 different types of flowers. I could go crazy just photographing flowers, huh? We're at the Grand Army of the Republic. It was a fraternal organization, much like the Masons. A patriotic organization with veterans of the Civil War who served the Union, Army, Navy, or Marine Corps during 1861-1865 till the end of the Civil War. And when they passed on, the Grand Army of the Republic had their own private cemeteries. It says this plot was originally located in New Helvetia, a cemetery in the corner of 31st and J Streets. And then I guess that it was... Dedicated in 1865 and then upon the death of Reeves, who was the owner and proprietor, in 1867, the city acquisition of the new Helfedia facility, a plot more acceptable size, was offered to Gar or the Grand Army of the Republic Cemetery in exchange. The remains of the Civil War veterans buried at that cemetery were removed and reinterred here. Just a little history. Wow. Isn't that amazing? This cemetery has Civil War history. It's a Union soldier. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, man. There's an old story. Sacramento's favorite ghost story. It's May Woolsey, whose gravestone at the cemetery is said to emanate with positive energy. And her ghost, I guess, has been seen here, but it's right here. This is her plot.
Here we go. Right here. That's May Woolsey. There's a lot of ghost stories that are affiliated with this place. Many several ghosts haunt this cemetery. That includes a young girl playing near a headstone of a deceased child, a couple dressed in black, it's supposed to be a dog, or a couple animals that follow people around. Of course, animals are not allowed here because people don't clean up after their dog, and they want to preserve this place, which is understandable. They give haunted tours around October, and they tell you stories about ghosts and so forth. I, I think it's pretty interesting. I might take the tour. Anyhow, May Wolsey was born in Sacramento in 1866 and spent the greater portion of her life in Sacramento. She did well in school, finished second of her class of 28. May died of cerebritis, according to the mortuary record, after a sudden illness and was buried on the, in 1879. Her grief-stricken mother gathered May's favorite toys, games, needlework, and diary together with family photos, letters, and heirlooms, as well as records of her visit to spiritual mediums and her effort to contact May. These were locked and sealed in the trunk and stored under a stairwell. In 1979, the owner of the house in the process of remodeling found the trunk just as Mrs. Wolsey had placed it. It was donated to Sacramento History Museum, and May Wolsey became an instant celebrity 100 years after she died. May's diary was typical of a 12-year-old girl, complains about her mother's bad humor, having to babysit for her niece, and worrying about what she would have to wear to a party and who will be there. She attended a party in July in 1879, which was reviewed in the Daily Bee and Sacramento Daily Record Union. They stated that the grounds were lighted by Chinese lanterns. There were about 200 guests. May says in her diary that she wore a black silk dress trimmed with velvet and that she had a good time at the party. Today, her ghost is still, still seen around this very grave site. You can also see that there's toys. It's fascinating. Sacramento turned Varane. In 1854, Sacramento was prospering in the spite of the floods, fires, and epidemics. German-born citizens and the men of the German ancestry decided to organize a turn Varane, as was the custom in their homeland. They circulated a proclamation assembled on eight in 1854, June 2nd, to establish the Sacramento turn Varane. 1859, the Sacramento turn Varane purchased a property on K Street between 9th and 10th Street, where the first turn Varane Hall was built that same year. Many memorable events, including gymnastic tournaments and singing festivals, were held in the hall. 1925, the present turn Varane Hall was built at 3349 J Street. And March of 16th of 1883, the cemetery plot was purchased for $150 as a permanent resting place for the deceased Turners. And then many graves were brought here. I've never heard of that before. There is always something new to learn when it comes to these locations. There's a lot of history. And I wish that I was able to see everything, but the cemetery is huge. We're going to have to come back to view much more of it. What's that brick building back there, or that building? Huh? Oh. American Legion, Post 61. J. Holland Layler, Camp Number 5. Layler, J. Holland Layler, in honor of whose cemetery the camp was named, was on the staff of the Southern Pacific Railroad Company's hospital in Sacramento prior to the commencement of the war between the U.S. and Spain. His sections for the Spanish and American War veterans was not a very extensive war. As you can see, every section tells a story and every plot is different. Certain plots have Civil War veterans, other plots have fraternal organizations, these are all Spanish-American War veterans. And as much as I'd like to spend time here, I would prefer to spend more time in the oldest section of the cemetery. Because keep in mind, we're not just here for the history, we're also here to investigate the paranormal. And I've gotten some EVPs in cemeteries, older sections of cemeteries just like this one. Not just EVPs, but, you know, we've gotten some high readings at some of the older plots. Look at that. It's almost a 10. In the Spanish-American War 
area. It's a lot of energy. There are no power lines. And there's some off in the distance, but this would never pick them up. Now when it's 100 feet away, and if it would, it'd be about a three or four. So tent's pretty strong. It does make you wonder. I'm still skeptical, but it is quite possible there's some hidden energies. It's an old cemetery. This is the type of cemetery it is. Fountains and statues. It has some of the most prominent individuals of Sacramento. There is porta potties. Yay! It's a very amazing place. In retrospect, you have to understand, being one of the oldest cemeteries in Sacramento over the years has generated a lot of ghost stories. And I'd love to look into this place more. It's very large and extensive. It's just warranting a second trip to visit. Not that I need an excuse. This is the Mason section, by the way. A Masonaries, which is a fraternal organization. Looks like they're doing some restoration work on the old chapel. Mortuary Chapel, closed. Oh yeah. Nice when they complete it. Kind of a magical sense. The walkways have purple flower buds. Look at this, it's completely purple. From the falling flower petals of this tree. Some of the monuments tower 20, 30 feet high. It's very lush, there's gardens everywhere. You don't see a lot of vandalism here like you do in other cemeteries. It's very well maintained. That's because they also have security here, which they should. This, my friends, is the Pioneer section of Old City Cemetery. Pioneer Cemetery Grove. Sacramento Pioneer Cemetery Association was founded by men who came to California before 1850 and wished to preserve the memories of the epochal events in the gold rush in the earliest days of Sacramento. They purchased much of the Pioneer Grove from the city in 1861 and acquired more area over the next 40 years, which is the cemetery you see right here. And it just kept expanding, expanding. Among the founding members resting here are Mark Hopkins, General Albert Maver Wynn, and James McGlatchy. Honorary members buried elsewhere include the President, U.S. Grant, James Marshall, where gold was discovered in Coloma, and General John Sutter. Sutter's Fort was the earliest fort in the region. When the Donner Party was discovered, or what was left of the Donner Party, they were taken to Sutter's Fort, which was under the control of John Sutter. And they were taken there in the spring. By 1855, the association, 200 members in 2008, over 300 men and women who perpetuate the Founder's mission and care for the Grove. This is where the cemetery began, right here. There's John Sutter. John Sutter ran, operated the fort out here. The Donner Party was taken to the Sutter's Fort. Remember in the spring, they took them. They brought it because that was all that was out here in Sacramento. It started off as a fort before it became a city. And then you have Marshall, who discovered gold in Coloma. It, it's called the Marshall Trail. They have a statue. And then you have other other people, like you have a vice president here. Uh, many early pioneers. But definitely, this is, I want some photos. This is a good area to check out. There's crypts and everything. It's the founder of the Native Sons, another fraternal group. The frontier, this is, this is where the cemetery began. This plot of land. And then it expanded over 40 years. And that's where you get all these other smaller cemeteries. It's still all one cemetery, it's just plotted off. General Wynn, founder, well General Wynn is the founder of the Order of the Native Sons and the, and the Colden West who have erected this monument to his memory. Wow, this place is amazing. I'm in the sun, there we go. It's a Mark Hopkins grave. A 49er, one of the railroad's legendary big four and treasurer of the Central Pacific Railroad He's entombed. It's a 350-ton granite structure. He dominates the pioneer section. He died March in 1878 and was buried in San Francisco until the completion of his tomb in 1880. Albert Wynn, which 
when greets the frontier section and I took a photo of it earlier with the statue he was the first Sacramento's first city council in 1849 was selected as his president and ex officio the first mayor of he was the first mayor of Sacramento but unlike Bigelow he was not elected directly to office in 1875 he was the found the native sons of the golden west not colon golden his monument in the cemetery is the tallest the tallest cemetery monument so I'll try to right there that's winds monument We're almost at the highest point. Check this out. The highest point in the cemetery is the tallest region of Sacramento. It says the high point in the cemetery may be the highest elevation in Sacramento. During the flood of 1861, the cemetery served as a safe haven from the waters. Hundreds of tents were described as being visible on the hills before this was a cemetery or this area. So this is the high point. Founder of the Central Pacific. Mark Hopkins? Yeah, he was one of the, there was four founders. He was one of the big four. Wow. But this mausoleum can accommodate 16 caskets. 16 caskets? Woo! 900,000 pounds of, of marble and granite. It's granite or, huh. There's also, ladies and gentlemen, another grave we're looking for. It's of Captain James Hommins of USN. Earliest known burial in City Cemetery, Captain Hommins died in 1849, was initially buried in the tear grounds located towards the front of the cemetery. When his son died in 1858, Mrs. Hommins purchased this lot and her husband and son were buried together. We'll see if we can find that. And this grave's missing a head. Tumage. Tumage. And then we'll head up to the highest point. See, there's some statues on the hill. That's, that's where the, all the statues are, is on the hill. So we'll check it out. Oh, yeah, one more thing, ladies and gentlemen. I was talking about John Sutter earlier. Let me give you a more in-depth history. I did not find Sutter's grave, but Sutter's very well known as much as Marshall, where gold was discovered in Coloma. Although his father built the fort and established the empire, so I was wrong about John Sutter. It was his dad that built it. It's still the family line. He did build what was called as New Helvetia and credit for planning and founding the city of Sacramento. John Sutter founded Sacramento in 1848. He also goes by John Jr. A disagreement with his father over the town would cause him to leave in 1850. He died in Alcapulco, Mexico in 1897. His grave is found here. I don't know if his father is buried here. Does not say anything. Many crypts adorn the hillsides found here. As I was telling Tammy, we're never going to be able to view the entire cemetery. I will say one thing, though. This is one of the most haunted sites in Sacramento. So if you come to Sacramento, look in the ghost hunt, start with this place. Not just only because it has history, but it's abundant in nature. Another thing you may want to know, ladies and gentlemen, the 12-year-old girl who died in 1879 from encephalitis appeared to her parents and told them she was not dead, but waiting for them on the other side. That's why everybody thinks May Wolsey still haunting this location. At least the mom had hired mediums and such to contact her daughter. Very haunted place. And I was talking to you earlier about the hauntings, about the couple dressed in black and the ghost of a pit bull being seen near the gates, a little girl playing near a headstone. This place is full of ghost stories and lore. They also have this tour that they give. Check out this stone. Did you see this with the statue? Oh, yeah, this one's got its head. The other one sure doesn't have the head, does it? Wow, that's beautiful. Haskell. We're standing at one of the highest points in Sacramento. Right here, ladies and gentlemen. It's a f not the focal point of cemetery, but it is one of the highest points in Sacramento and the cemetery. And all you do is look 360 degrees and you see nothing but... Hundreds of tombstones in every direction. It's just a beautiful sight. 
There's no way I'm going to be able to see the whole cemetery. It's going to be closing soon. But this documentary and the pictures that we had taken should give you an idea of what this place is about and help promote its history and preserve it. You want maybe this one? I don't know. It's up to you. You know what's weird is that name? Jim Voorhees. Voorhees? I went to school with two girls, Bridget and Heather with Voorhees. Wow. They Look at the tile. Did you see the tiles? Yeah. Wow, it's gorgeous. Wow. I have to get photos of these. I gotta photograph everything I can. Look at all these statues. They're just lined up left and right on each side of this road. Let me see what it looks like in the front. Or on the back side. This one has... Oh, this is a miner's area. There's a pickaxe she's holding. Daughters of the Revolution. Possibly. Also, Newton Booth is buried in the frontier section. Lawyer, merchant, politician, native of Indiana, became one of the state's first statesmen. He was elected state senator in 1862. I did not find his grave. And he was the 11th governor of California and United States senator in 1873. He owned the Booth and Company in Sacramento. Also, General George Wright is buried here. I remember hearing about Wright when I lived in Florida. He had gotten accommodations during the Seminole War in Florida, all the way to the Mexican War, to the Indian campaigns in the Pacific Northwest. His loyalty to the Union also earned him a President Lincoln's appointment as a military commander the entire Pacific Coast during the Civil War. Where's the governor's stone? Did you know there's another there's another governor in the frontier section? It's Governor Newton Booth. The eleventh governor of California. Wow. Beautiful place. Does close early though. Colgan. Edward P. State Controller William Irvin, Governor of California, born in 1827, died in 1866. And which one's this one here? These are all politicians, honey. Secretary of State. And this one, Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. These are all politicians. Wow. Pretty good. Thank you. Hardin Bigelow elected April 1850, first mayor of Sacramento under the charter form of government. A native of Michigan died in 1850 in San Francisco, a cholera followed by wounds received in the squatter riot at Sacramento. And then you have Hannah Sutter Young, Juan A. Sutter, founder and planner of the city of Sacramento, 1848, died in the port of Acapulco. A lot of history here, man. Resting place of California pioneers, the cemetery was established in 1850. Many of the victims of the cholera epidemic of that year are buried here, including among the graves are as illustrious Californians are those governors of John Bigler, Newton Booth, and, and William Irwin, General George Wright, hero of the Mexican War, Mark Hopkins, co-builder of the Central Pacific Railroad, General Albert McGuinn, founder of the Native Sons of the Golden West, Hardin Bigelow, the first mayor of Sacramento, William Hamilton, son of Alexander Hamilton, E.B. Crocker, and founder of the Crocker Art Gallery, and Reverend O'Wheeler, organizer in 1850, and Reverend O'Wheeler, organizer of 1850, the First Baptist Church.